Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all to me eating some nuts. So, let me just sit down on my rock. This has been my rock for almost 30 years. Today, we're going to be talking about the Corkers Devil's Canyon Wading Boots. And what better way to do a review of a product that has. Uh, kind of seen better days and I'm just taking a look at this now for the first time looks like the outsoles delaminating and I gotta say these boots are five years old these soles are five years old I lost this spike the day that I got them I was walking through a cobblestone stream best way to describe, describe it and uh, let's see if we can find where that spike went maybe not but we lost the spike. That was a disappointment, first day. But since then, that's been the only spike that's seemingly been uh, lost to the fish gods. Now, first thing I want to address is 800 pound gorilla room. See how floppy these are? I have pretty good ankles, playing sports all my life, never sprained an ankle. If you have weak ankles, these are not the boots for you. You want more of like a ski boot. You want something that has a lot of upper ankle support. These don't have that. These are more or less a, a, a tennis shoe of sorts for the water. They're very lightweight. Neoprene back here, synthetic all through here. And to say that I've been impressed at the longevity is an understatement. Usually I get, let's see if I can turn out the wind. Usually I get two years out of a pair of corkers. So these going on five or six years. Considering the mileage that I've put on these, on the sand even, with a bow of closure system, which uh, if you see the reviews online, I've seen it. I've experienced it firsthand, the buckle binding where you can't pull it out because the sand gets in there. I've seen people that had to actually cut the laces to get their feet out. I haven't had that problem so to each his own on that one if you're going to be using these in the surf where you're standing in we're talking ocean surf where you have fine sand you're standing in the in the, in the wash and your feet are kind of getting digging digging deeper and deeper and deeper as the water comes in and goes out when you're basically just you know sinking in the sand you may want to consider a traditional lacing system and not consider these boots for Fishing big rocks, big boulders, jetty rocks. For me personally, since I don't have an issue with the lack of ankle support, I like a floppy boot. I actually like keeping my boots loose, loosely laced. I know a lot of guides that do that too. Because to maintain traction on river rock, jetty rock, that has very alternating face, flat faces, you want to have as much contact with the spikes of your boot on that as possible. You don't want a rigid boot. You want it to kind of find the right flat so you get more traction. These have performed flawlessly in that regard. I have not had any slips and falls, close calls, yada, yada, yada. Uh, five years in, the issue that I'm having, if you could see my, my, waiting, my waiting sock right here. See this right here? This isn't the fault of the waiter. This is because, if you look down in there, see how that's worn away? That fabric on the insole. We don't want to take these apart too much because we got about a mile and a half trek back. But uh, it's almost like a 1985 Broham, where you have a headliner that's, that's sagging. The interior of the boot, on the underside of the toe box, the tongue, all sort of drooped, collected sand. I actually took an X-Acto knife and cut it out so I could get rid of the sand that was uh, accumulating in there. But even still, five years. It, took, it took, probably took three years for that to become an issue and four years to the point where it was wearing out the booty on my stocking foot waders. And these are Reddington Red Sips. These are not cheap waders. Um, I'm starting to get some seepage through in this area. Perfect fit long-lasting waiter not the most breathable on the planet very tough but the uh the deterioration of the interior boot is uh 
sort of beaten up the, the stocking feet on these waders. Uh, let's talk about the boa closure. I'm on my second set. Uh, boa reaching out to them very quickly responded and airmailed me a set. I think it was two days to get to my house. Came with a new dial, new gears, and new uh, laces. Uh, because of user error, when I first went to install them, I thought it was the wrong dial. Two years later, <laughs> I kept the same laces. The reason why the issue I was having was it would get loose. And I, it wasn't an emergency. I just wanted new laces for a trip or in a new dial for a trip just in case I wanted to keep it tight. Uh, I found that it, it didn't need that. And I just kept the, this is the BOA replacement in a drawer for about, I'd say, a solid two years. And uh, I finally replaced them and uh, it loosens up the same as it was when I had the replacement fresh. So, not sure if that's a BOA issue or what, but let's see, let's take a look at my other boot. I haven't touched this one. You can see one, two, three, four. I can get four cranks. That one loosened up a little bit. This one had loosened up probably about six or seven cranks, almost to the point where I just, you know, maybe an inch left of slack before I could slide my feet out. Um, as far as speed, getting these on and off, I don't think there's anything faster. Uh, you can get these on and off in a matter of, you know, from no waders on and not having fleece pants that have stirrups that make, you know, getting in and out of your waders easy. Uh, and not even having a zip front. These are zip waders. I can get in my waders and out and on the water and heading towards the water in under two minutes which <laughs> i'll never forget one time we we pulled up late to a spot where we were kind of traveling to fish and i told my buddy i'm gonna i'm gonna suit up and get out so we can get the pool there's a guy already in the lot three quarters of the way put together and i beat him to the spot and boy was he pissed <laughs> we were making baby noises that have been at him uh, up the river because he was cursing us out so uh, there were plenty of ooh, wah, ooh, wah, at, at, at full volume uh, directed at that uh, douchebag. So long story short, I'm going to buy these again. They have higher end models. Sims has come out with a few different ones. They have a boa closure that has a back piece that comes out. They even have a Star Wars version. I'm going to check their website to see if there's anything truly innovated, in, innovative that's come out. But I also want that loosey-goosey ankle support. I'm coming up on uh, 39 years old. My ankles are still good. My knees are, eh, my knees get sore when I kneel. I don't have any issues with twisting my knees. I have flexible hips and all that kind of stuff. So when I'm in a river, um, I'm, I'm never injuring myself because I'm slipping and sliding on rocks. But uh, if you guys are looking for a boot that you can use to cover significant ground, I'm in New Jersey, a lot of people fish, not a lot of places uh, you know, where you can park and fish that don't get pounded. So I find myself trekking uh, long distances to find secluded water that doesn't get hit often, or if all. And uh, it's not uncommon for me to trek a mile, a bushwhack, a mile, mile and a half before I even start fishing. And again, five years old. I'll have to check the exact purchase date if I can. Uh, it might even be older than that. I know I've gone through a few pairs of waders before these have been given out. And uh, this outsole has been my, my primary outsole. I don't think I've used anything, maybe a felt sole. But uh, the next pit, next set I want to get those, uh, those aluminum bars. I want to see how those hold up. My concern is mud. Uh, this outsole I want to say it's an ice skate on mud, but uh, you know you know what I'm talking about. That that river mud where you take a step and you don't have your weight centered over your foot. You're going sliding until you get to some uh, dry land <laughs> or water, or you land on your ass. Um, not the best for that. Not many out there are. Uh, not much of a difference between this and a felt sole if you're if you're coming across that kind of mud. Uh, in terms of getting into that uh, the, that detritus that that river muck where you you're kind of slogging through going through calf and knee deep something the mud that sucks your boot in never had an issue with these getting pulled off or and i have also never had an issue with the sole coming off 
uh, old corkers, I had issues dropping soles left and right. Uh, actually, my first two pairs of corkers, I had nothing but problems. Literally, the I, I, I forget the design, but it relied mainly on a heel strap to, and, a, and a toe uh, lock to keep the outsole in. That was awful. And I'm willing to bet corkers had uh, issues uh, with more than just me because their customer service at that point wasn't offering any replacements. Uh, when I mentioned the dropped spike and the lack of ankle support before I realized it was what I wanted, uh, within 24 hours I heard back from uh, Corker's customer service offering replacements, but I never took them up on that because it was, it was mid season and didn't care to. Um, so, from what I hear, 2018 to 2020, Corker's customer service is primo. So if you want a boot that's super lightweight, doesn't hold a lot of water, and it's starting to rain, and has tennis shoe-like mobility and comfort, I don't know of a boot on the market better than this specific one. Um, I don't have any issues busting my toes up from hitting rocks. They have a good toe cap here that's pretty strong. Everything about this boot is designed for mobility. And uh, again, half a decade or more and I'm still using I, I'm, I'm a mile and a half out in the middle of nowhere and uh, didn't think twice about lacing these up knowing the issues I have on the internals that are causing issues with my booties but it's time um, these are a size 11 US uh, they're a little large I wear a 10 and a half 11 shoe uh, I wear a 10 and a half New Balance 11 Nike and Reebok uh, these are a little big even with the heavy neoprene booties. Um, I thought they were 12s to be honest. So I have to figure out what I want to do for the next set if I want to go for a 10 or keep the 11. Uh, that's on you. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy this. This was a quick one. Just wanted to talk about a product that I've been using for quite some time and have a lot of uh, confidence in. And uh, yeah. And there's people coming. I've never seen people here. <laughs>